Hello after a longer break. This video is going to be again about AWS and today I'm going to show you how to set up RDS database and how to set up a password rotation for it using AWS Secrets Manager. So this will be quite a little bit of uh, clicking through AWS console, but then at the end we will set up a Spring Boot application and it could be actually any Java application that uses JDBC under the hood that will be able to connect to this database, but with taking the password from the secrets manager. So whenever the password changes in the secrets manager, the application will not have to be either restarted or any configuration will not have to be changed. It will be just able by itself to fetch the latest password whenever it changes. Okay, I'm logged into my AWS management console and then I have to go to RDS to create a database. I will create a Postgres because that's the database that I'm the most comfortable with. So I select here PostgreSQL and I will just use the free tier. And if you want to just play with AWS like I'm doing right now, you should also take the free tier because it may not you cost anything. So then the database identifier doesn't really matter that much. And at this point, I will just choose to put my own master password that will be called my secret. And I put it also here to the confirm password field. And in the database instance, I choose the Borstable class so that it's the like the cheapest option, the, the one that fits into the free tier. I don't need to change anything with the storage. I don't want to have a multi-AZ deployment. In the connectivity, since this is just a, just a demo, I will keep the default VPC and here in the additional connectivity configuration, I will choose that it's publicly accessible so that I, I want to access it later on from my local machine. And we don't really need any additional configuration. So I will just hit create database. It may take a while. It usually takes like a couple of minutes. So I will just speed the video up right now. And we are back in a second. So the database is created now and I will check if I can connect it from the local host. So I will go to the database details and I can see the endpoint over here. If I'm able to access it with Telnet on port 5432, we are good to go. So I will do Telnet 5432 and unfortunately I still cannot access it even though we chose the public availability. And the thing is that I have to go to my VPC security groups and I need to uh, add another rule to the for the inbound traffic. So I will edit it here and I'm adding a rule and I will set the port 5432 and the source can be anywhere. Of course, again, this is just a demo so you shouldn't definitely do it for production. If I try to connect again, I'm now connected. Let's create now the simplest Spring Boot application that will connect to this RDS instance. I already bootstrap a project with Spring Initializer here and the only dependency, like the extra dependency I add is a starter for JDBC. So there's no JPA, no Hibernate, we don't need it at this stage. And the application will be very simple. There will be just a one scheduled job that will execute every second and it will print whatever result from the database. So we can make just uh, that it prints out uh, like a select one from the JDBC template. So I will auto wire here uh, JDBC template. And here we will just do JDBC template query for object select one and this will be string. I will add here enable scheduling and now the last thing is that we have to configure the uh, Spring Boot application to actually connect to the RDS instance. So we have to set up a couple of properties. First one will be the data source URL. And we need to take the endpoint from the RDS console. So I'm back to AWS console. I go back to RDS. I go to database instances. And if I go to my database here, I pick the endpoint. So the URL is JDBC, Postgre, SQL, the endpoint, and then the database name, which is by default Postgres. Then we have to set up the data source 
username, which is also Postgres and Spring data source password. Data source password, which will be my secret. So, so far we didn't set up anything like a password rotation. If I run the application now, it should every, every second, it should just print number one to the console. I forgot to add the driver for Postgres. So I will just go back to Maven dependencies and paste the dependency for PostgreSQL. So let's run it again. Okay, so the application is started, it prints one to the console. So at least we know that our Spring Boot application connects successfully to RDS instance. What we will do now is we will set up a password rotation for, for this RDS instance using AWS Secrets Manager. I am back to AWS console In services. I go to Secrets Manager. Here I have an option to store a new secret and I can choose that it is going to be a credentials for RDS database. So we can specify the username and the password to be stored in the secret. So it is going to be username is Postgres and the current password is my secret. I will just show the password because I'm pretty sure I make a typo. And here we can choose the encryption key so we can like create our custom keys here, I will just stick to the default encryption key. And I will select the database instance that I have just created. On the second page, we need to put the secret name and the convention is that we use kind of like a path so we can use the secrets, my app, let's say slash DB, this is this is totally custom, I don't need to put any description or any tags. But if you do it for production, it's quite encouraged to put some tags in the description. And on the on the next page, we can set up the rotation. So I will do the automatic rotation. And I want to uh, select the rotation interval. So 30 days, I mean, depending on the on the security constraints you have. And the password rotation happens through the AWS Lambda function. So here we can just create a new Lambda function to, that performs the rotation. And I can call it uh, my DB password, let's say. So this is going to be the, the name of the Lambda function. And I can, yeah, I will select here to, to use the secret because we haven't stored anything previously in Secrets Manager. So then I click next and it tells me already that how should I use the, how should I obtain the password from the secrets manager? And we have a code snippet for Java that as everything that uses AWS SDK, it is pretty long and it's not necessarily something I would like to have in my application, especially when it comes to connecting to the database. So we can just ignore it for now, create store and this is where we have already the secret start and rotation is being configured. It may take up to two minutes. So again, I will pause the videos and I will come back in a second. Okay, so the rotation is enabled now. When I go to the secret, I should be able to see what is the secret value. So we can already see that it changed the password for the database to, to something like this. I will copy this to my clipboard and go back to my application. And now if I change the password here from my secret to whatever secrets manager created, this should, of course, work again. Since we set up the secret manager to rotate passwords every 30 days, I mean, this password will become invalid in 30 days or so. We don't even need to wait 30 days, we can just go back to the uh, to the secrets manager console and choose to rotate the secret immediately. So when we rotate the secret immediately, it will set a new password for the database. And now if I retrieve the secret value again, we can see that the password now is different. Does it mean that our application stopped working? Actually, it didn't. 
So the AWS Secrets Manager is set up for the high availability. As long as there is any client connected with the old password, it will retain both the old password and then also the new password. They will both work at the same time. And we can see that when I restart the application without changing the password to the new password, it will fail to connect now. So it started the demo application, but soon we will get an exception, exactly. So here, finally, after more or less 10 minutes of the recording, we come to the, to the essence of this video. Uh, since the password changes in the database automatically, we also want our application to react automatically to it so that, that it is able to obtain the new password without uh, any, any changes in our code or in the, in, or in the infrastructure. Uh, there was a, this code snippet in the Secrets Manager how to obtain the password uh, through the API. We don't really want to have this kind of code, ideally at least in the application. It's way too low level and we would have to somehow hook it up before the, before the Spring data source is created. So we would have to opt out from the Spring Boot auto configuration probably. And fortunately, there is a better way to do it. Uh, AWS released a library, library called AWS Secrets Manager JDBC that does all the hard work for us. Setting it up, it, it's actually quite easy. We go back to the POM XML and we add another dependency. I will just paste it here. And it's AWS Secrets Manager JDBC. And once this is on the class path, we can change the JDBC driver to the to the custom one from this library and this custom driver before connecting to the database it will go to AWS Secrets Manager and obtain the password based on the username. So first of all we got to change the driver class. We cannot rely anymore on Spring Boot uh, auto detection of the JDBC driver and we can choose one of these depending on which RDS instance uh, we chose, which database type. So in our case, it's a Postgres driver. And then we don't need to set and we cannot even set the password anymore. And we have to modify also the URL. Instead of having just JDBC prefix, it has to be JDBC dash secrets manager. And the last thing is to tell the this library uh, which secret it should use actually to obtain the username and password. We got to go again to the AWS console and we copy the secret name and put it as a JDBC username. So once we put it here, this driver will just on application startup, whenever it tries actually to connect to the database, create a new connection, it will go to the secret using the API, fetch the database and use it for the JDBC connection. So let's start if it actually, let's check if it actually works. It may take a little bit longer for the application startup or actually for getting the, the results for the database because it has to have, has to make some extra HTTP calls to AWS services, but in general, it's, it's, let's say fast enough. So what happens if we now rotate the password? So I will go back to the AWS console and rotate the secret immediately. Uh, as it did happen before, our application continue to run because the old password is still valid. But now if I restart the application, and this is, let's say the simulation of the new instance coming up because of the auto scaling, it managed to get the new password without any changes in our code. So, and there's one thing that I said that it's not entirely true. Uh, whenever this library creates a connection, it doesn't go directly to AWS Secrets Manager, but it has internal cache where it stores the secret. So it gets it from the cache, then it tries to connect to the database. And only if it cannot connect to the database because the password probably changed, then it goes to the Secrets Manager and to get a new password. And this is quite important because the Secrets Manager is not the cheapest AWS service, I would say. So all the API calls in the end cost some money. And whenever the connection pool creates a new connections, there can be a lot. The more services, the, the more connections, the more requests to AWS Secrets Manager, 
it could get quite expensive. This is another reason why I believe it's worth to consider using this library if you want to have a password rotation for your RDS database. Thank you for watching. I hope to publish more videos soon, but it is actually quite tricky for me to recently find time and space and the quiet environment like I have here today to make it. So no promises, but I really hope to see you next time.